Hey everybody, today we are going to talk a little bit more about the 3D modeling process. Now this is just an optional video, but I would like you, if you're still struggling on the basics of Maya, to kind of give this video a watch and maybe even follow along just to help you with your skill set and learning all your tools. So let's get started. In this video we're going to model a simple bottle. Now this bottle is not going to be as detailed as I want for your easy model submissions, but it will really help you kind of learn the different modeling tools. So I have a Maya 2016 currently open here, and I'm gonna start by going to File, Project Window. And in Project Window, I'm gonna set my current project to new, and we're gonna name this bottle underscore model, and we're gonna set our location to desktop. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit select and then accept. Now, I've gone ahead and did the hard work of finding this bottle, and this is going to be our image plane. So, we're going to go ahead and open our bottle model directory that we just created and drag the bottle into the source images folder. With that done, we're going to go ahead back into Maya and we're going to hold spacebar or tap spacebar and go to your front view. Tap spacebar again, make sure you're in the front view, and go to view image plane, import image. Now, you'll see that because we entered our project directory and we did it correctly, we have in our source images that bottle picture. I'll simply double click on that picture and now I have an image plane. Now, while that's still selected in my display tab under my channel box, which you can see right here, I'm gonna go ahead and hit layers, create layer from selected. I'm creating a lot of different layers here, so bear with me. Delete that one, and we'll call this one image plan. And to get this open, I just double clicked on the word layer two. And make sure it's on there. If it's not, you simply right click and say add selected objects. And now it is. And I'm gonna go and set this to VPR. I just keep clicking until the R shows up in that blank box. Now, I wanna add my geometry. Now there's multiple ways I can create a geometry here of this kind of a bottle shape. One of the ways that we're gonna learn is polygon modeling. So I can create a polygon. In this case, I'll start with the cylinder because that's the basic shape of the bottle. And we'll create a polygon cylinder a couple different ways. We can go to our shelf and polygon cylinder. We can do create polygon primitives cylinder, or we can hold the shift key, right mouse button, and go holding both to poly cylinder. Once that's created, we want to open up our channel box and look under the word inputs, and I kind of want to lower my subdivisions, so I'm going to change that down to 12 just to give us a lower polygon model. I'll then hit my R key, and I'll hit F here for focus and kind of zoom out with my mouse keys. But once I hit the R key, I want to use this center square and left click on it and scale it to the appropriate size of the bottle. Then, I want to hold my right mouse button down and go to vertex. Once I have that selected, I can now access the components that are the vertices. So I'm going to select the bottom ring of vertices and I'm just kind of marking over those and hitting the W key. Then using the handle on my move tool, I'm going to translate those down to match the bottom of the actual bottle. Go back to object mode and hit spacebar and now you can see the result. All right, now that we have that, we can go ahead and continue our modeling to model this curved shape of the bottle. Now, to do this, we're gonna use the extrude tool. So, first things first, we wanna make sure that we go to our animation preferences, and under selection, we wanna make sure that polygon selection is set to select faces with center. And I always use that center button and then hit save. So now that I have that saved, when I go to right click face mode, you'll see I have these center dots within my actual scene. So I'm gonna grab just the faces on the top of our wine bottle, hit space bar, and go to the front mode, and I'm gonna begin the extrusion process. Now extruding a face is basically pulling a whole new set of faces out of the current model. We can do this multiple ways. We can do Edit Mesh, Extrude, Control-E, or we could use 
at the shelf tool, or finally you could hold shift, right click, holding both buttons down, go down to extrude face. Now, once you have that, simply use your arrow and pull up your object, hit R on your keyboard, and using only the center square, pull in the item. Now, what that's doing is essentially creating the curvature of the bottle. Now, to see this a little better, I can do a few things. I can turn on my shading, wireframe unshaded, and also my shading x-ray mode. Now, once you have this, we could go back to Mesh Extrude. In our case, we'll just hit the G key. We'll select it and hit G up. It's not working right now, so we'll do Extrude again. And we'll pull up R for scale, and then we'll try that G key now. So we'll hit G. There it is. G usually repeats the last tool, R. We scale from the center. Notice I'm not pulling this scale button. I'm simply pulling the center scale button. Hit G again to extrude, pull up, R for scale, pull in, G, pull up, oops, hit G twice there, R for scale. You want to be careful you don't hit the G twice, especially the extrude tool. You want to make sure your faces are centered, those little dots are centered on the face rather than on any of the edges. If you see a dot on an edge, a face dot that is, you, uh, something's gone wrong. So now that we have it again, we'll hit G once more, and we'll kind of just work our way up. Hit R, then G, and we can actually pull this one a little higher, then G, R key, and we'll kind of scale that in, G. We'll get to this point, and hit the R key, G, and we'll pull it up to this point, and then hit G again, and we won't worry about this bulge just yet. We'll get to that in a second. G again, G again, just scale up a few ways. So, if I hit spacebar, what you may notice is now I have the basic shape of my bottle. Let's put on wireframe unshaded so you can see. So that's pretty nice. Um, I do want to kind of scale out the top of the bottle. So let's go back to my mode here, go to face mode. I'll grab just these faces and hit R and scale once again from the center to kind of get that look. And let's add some more geometry. So one of the geometry pieces I'm going to add is an edge loop. For this, I'm going to use my Mesh Tools Multi-Cut tool. And with that activated in component mode, if I hold the control key down, I actually get an edge loop tool. So with the control key held down, I'm going to go ahead and add an edge loop by left clicking. And we'll put one in the middle just to be safe to divide that. Holding Alt, I'm moving around. I'm going to zoom in here and kind of put a few little edge loops here. You'll see why in a bit. Maybe one at the very top to kind of help bring this together. Now, we have all the different edge loops, but one of the main things that's missing, and if we look at our actual bottle here at the bottom, let me zoom out here so you guys can see, is this kind of inside area. So let's go ahead and get on that. And if we go to the bottom of the bottle, and we attempt to put the control edge loop tool, which it will work up here, but it doesn't work here. That's because we have triangles. So I'm gonna do a little trick. I'm actually going to add a very small edge loop here, hit W, right click edge mode, double click, and then hit R for scale, and I'm going to create a little area to pull in. So I'm going to guesstimate kind of the, the width of that, right click and go to faces, and holding shift, I'm going to grab those faces. So that's working rather nicely. and. I'll hit 4, and 4 activates my see-through mode. And actually, let's go to the front view. It'll be a little easier this way. And let's do our extrude again. Edit Mesh Extrude. We'll pull that in. We can scale that. G again. Pull it in. Scale it. And then G maybe one more time. Just to the top here. There we go. Now let's look at the bottom. We'll hit 5 on our keyboard so I can see that. I'll turn off my image plane. And maybe I just want to grab 
the small point in there and just kind of, you can see what I do here, just kind of pull it up to give it that round look. So all of a sudden, rather quickly, we have a really nice bottle. Now, right now we're in very low polygon mode. You can see we have a lot of history. So I'm gonna do an edit, delete by type history. That's just gonna kind of clean things up and I can even name my bottle by double clicking in the channel box and calling this bottle and hitting return. Now that I have this all set up, let's go ahead and see what this would look like smoother. So right now I'm gonna duplicate this and let's turn off wireframe on shading. And you can see by default, I have these lines on them. I don't want that. So overall, I'm gonna do a mesh display with it selected and we're gonna choose on the duplicate soften edge. And what that's gonna do is soften everything to give it the appearance of a smooth piece of geometry, but without actually adding any edges. Now I can also harden my edges as well. So to do that, I go to right click edge mode, double click on an edge loop, and here I'm gonna do mesh display, harden edge, and I'll do the same here for the top. And we'll kind of scale this down a little bit, double click, and let's do double click there, mesh display, harden edge. And if we click away now, you can see we have a little more definition on the bottle. Now we could do that down here as well because as you can see, it doesn't really appear flat. So if I double click on this edge loop, mesh display, harden edge, you can see now it does that. It's a little harder. So that's one way. But what if we wanna go further? So I'm gonna duplicate this again, just so you guys can see the transition or the progression of our models. And I'm gonna work with this in smooth mesh preview mode. Now, if you hit three on your keyboard while your model's selected, you'll notice it really smooths it out quite nicely. And this is called smooth mesh preview. If you hit one on your keyboard, it goes back to the very linear, sharp, low poly version that you were working on. And this is a good way to go from linear to organic shapes. So to do this, what I like to do is when I click on my bottle, I'll hit two, and it kind of shows me a preview of both. If you look very closely, you can see the little shell on the outside of the bottle. This is actually the linear shape, and then the geometry is previewing the smooth shape. So I could go in here, and I could add a bit more detail if I chose to, and kind of do some, some nice touches, maybe get my multi-cut tool once more. And let's add another edge loop in there, just to kind of round out the bottom. So that looks really nice. And maybe we'll add something here to the top. Let's get very close here. We'll add almost like a bevel to this top. So I'm holding control with my multi-cut tool. And go to edge mode, and double click. And we'll kind of scale that in. Hit W. And double click again on the edge. There we go. Get a nice scaled out look. Where you get it when you like it, what we can do is actually we should save our file real quick. So we'll do a save scene, we'll call these bottles. And we'll get the little warning here in a second. There we go. And we'll convert this to actually a higher resolution geometry. Right now these are low res and they don't have a lot of faces, but the what it's doing in three mode is it's actually giving us the appearance that we smoothed this model and added more density. So to make that actual model super dense, we would go to modify convert, and I would simply choose polygons, or excuse me, smooth mesh preview to polygons. And with that selected in object mode, now I have a pretty dense mesh. Now in my inputs, I actually get a smooth node. And I can even change this, I can bring the divisions down to one, and you can see it's just a little smoother without the intense density that the other one had. So when you get it when you like where you get it where you like it, go ahead and do a uh, edit delete by type history. And now we have three iterations of the same bottle, all of which have different levels of detail. Now these two are actually the same amount, but they just have different visual feels to them and you can see the difference in the uh, the kind of the looks. This bottle is looking really nice. All right, let's push this further. What if we wanted to put a label on this bottle? Well, to do that, we could do that multiple ways. Um, one of the ways that I would probably do it is duplicate the bottle one more time. 
and I would go ahead and select the faces on the bottle where the label would be and I would actually use one of my other tools called the extract tool that's under edit mesh extract and by using this tool and you gotta be very careful which arrow you pick but you can see it kinda moves it all different ways I like to go ahead and hit this little center piece and then just move this out of the way right click object mode and then now I can hit delete and actually have a little label so you'll notice when you go to hit W that your manipulator isn't actually on the extracted faces so to get that back to normal you do modify center pivot that's going to center the pivot point and now I can match this up I could even extrude this outward so we could use our edit mesh extrude or pardon me mesh I don't know, that was right edit mesh extrude and I'll pull that out just slightly give it kind of two faces like a label would be and we'll just kind of pull that on there and now we have if I take off my wireframe the illusion of a label and that label may not be exactly correct but I could go and change it I would obviously want to use reference imagery to kind of get that to work so now that I have my label I can go and add more things but all of my items that I add would be based off of reference so if I go to old bottle and I look at some examples in Google images what I want to do is I would actually want to model one of these I want to gather information and say okay well what happens if this was a torn label how would I get it to go there well for that I may go ahead and delete partial faces and you know let's use side mode since we have it there we go and hit delete and now we can start telling a story with this bottle so I can grab my vertices I can hit W I can rotate these outward and let's hit W again and we can start kind of playing with that shape and this is where really the creativity comes you want to make sure using image planes you get proper proportion um, otherwise it doesn't really kind of work out for you and as I kind of work here there we go I kind of just work on the, the overall shape and bend of that bottle and I could use my smooth preview mode again so if I feel like smoothing this out smoothing this label that's definitely something I could do I kind of like it smooth so again I'll go to modify convert smooth mesh preview to polygons and that gives me a little bit more of a ripped label I can even pull my smooth face divisions down to, from two to one and up oh, you can see we get a little bit of geometry messing up so let's pull it back to two I'll just make it nicer and now let's hide the grid here real quick you don't have to do this I just want you to see my bottles I'm starting to get a really nice story out of my shape and there's a lot of other tools we can use for this there's the sculpt tool there's there's all sorts I can put like wrinkles in here I can start adding again damage or I can add the there's on the glass there's actually these little small circles I could add those down there bottom line is I'm using my reference to achieve a very close proportion bottle that looks realistic now finally let's go ahead and put all these bottles on a layer and if I wanted to make a bottle another way I could use curves so I'm going to add these objects and I'm going to rename this layer bottles and we'll hit save and let's turn on the image plane once more and let's go to the side view and check this out I can actually use create curve tool CV curve tool and draw the curvature of the bottle now this is a really really sneaky way to do it and that doesn't mean it's the wrong way that just means that you're working smarter not harder and we may not be able to get that exact top portion I want to make sure that I'm drawing it now what this tool is basically like is like your pen tool so 
I'm clicking with my left mouse button. I'm basically drawing vertices. And I'm mimicking the profile. We'll go to the very top here of this actual geometry. And then when I'm done, I'll hit return. Now, I don't know if you guys can see that on your screen. I'm going to pull it out so you can. I kind of have the shape of the bottle. So I'll hit Z so it matches again. And once I have that, I'm going to go in the modeling menu to surfaces and revolve. Now I'm going to hit the option box, which is this little box to the right of revolve. And I'm going to make sure first I reset my settings. And second, I set my settings to polygons. I'll hit revolve. And I have some work I still have to do, but check this out. I've made myself a bottle. So let's see what else we could do with this bottle. So I'm going to go to my attribute editor, which is right here. It's these kind of three sideways popsicles. And I'm going to go to the word NURBS tessellate. And when I do this, and I have to make sure that I've set that, that option to polygons before I lock that curve, I can go ahead and adjust the tessellation. So I can change the polys from triangles to quads. We have some n-gons in there we'll have to fix. I can change them to specifically fit a certain poly count. So if I'm only allotted maybe a thousand polygons for something, I could do that, or I could lower it or raise it. I could also do my favorite, which is general, and general looks something like out of the Phantom Zone in Superman. But general, I go to the general tab, and I change my U and V type to per span of isoparms. And this is the really cool thing. By doing that, check that out. Look at that detail we have on the bottle. So it's not perfect. Again, we don't have the bottom of the bottle, but we can go ahead and grab specific faces. So we can double click on these edges. We can convert edges if we want to. Uh, there's ways to kind of convert edges to different selections. We can, what can we do? We can paint those little edges or we can just simply Actually, I like the paint tool. Let me go here to the paint tool and I'll show you guys. This is a fun tool. So we just kind of go around. I hit B and my middle mouse button and that will make it smaller. And let's go ahead and paint the selection. Again, that was B and my middle mouse button held down until I got the size I want. So again, B is in brush middle mouse button left and right, and then I let go. And when I get it to where I want it, then maybe I can do an extrude. I'll center that extrude and pull up. Oh, it looks like we got some sort of weird shape up. Oh, you know why? Because I accidentally selected some of the back sides. So let's delete these by holding shift. There we go. Now let's try that extrude. Make sure we don't have that. And I'm going to undo it one more time to make sure I don't have any faces selected. There we go. Okay. Extrude face, center it, pull it up, and hit five. And if I get an area like this, which I'm not too sure what's going on, I usually grab it, try to delete it. That worked actually rather well. And then I can start grabbing my edge loops by double clicking, pulling those up. Double click in there. Can't forget those tiny ones. And kind of start making our shape and subtract those faces. And kind of continue our bottle modeling process. So again, there's more than one way to skin a cat here in Maya, but overall, hopefully with this lesson, you guys have realized there's a lot of different things you can do. And I deleted a face by accident, so I would need to fix that. Might as well teach you that while we're in here. I'm going to use a cool tool called the append to polygon tool. If you have a hole that you accidentally messed up, you click on one edge, you click on the other, you hit return, and voila. There you go. So we're getting there. We would have a lot of work to do still. Um, you can see here in smooth mode. But it's another way to kind of create that bottle. Let's put them all side by side with one another. And when we're done, we would do create 
or pardon me, edit, delete by type history. So you have different types of bottles, all made in unique ways. One of them was made with curves, you can see it. The other one was made with simple box modeling, and we even did some extracting to make a very cool label to start getting some detail for the bottle. So hopefully you enjoyed this lesson and you can apply these techniques to start your easy model and then really push the detail and creativity of your model using photo reference. Hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you next time.